as we have always done in the past. For 2024, Malaysia's economy is expected to grow healthily between 4% and 5%, as forecasted by the Ministry of Finance. The government is taking steps, for example, by reducing fuel subsidies and tweaking fuel prices to keep, to keep inflation in check. Additionally, our job market is strong, supported by positive business outlooks, low unemployment and steady increases in real wages. To this end, the government is continuously providing substantial fiscal support with the development expenditure allocation of 90 billion ringgit in budget 2024. Our focus areas include industrial development, green investment infrastructure, and enhancements in public utilities. Our effective investment strategies have paid off, well based on data from January to September 2023 where we have attracted 225 billion ringgit in investment, a 6.6% increase from before. These investments come from 3,949 different projects and are expected to create 89,495 new jobs, which reinforces Malaysia's strong performance and position in services, manufacturing and primary industries. So ladies and gentlemen, the implementation of key strategic plans like the Madani Economy, New Industrial Master Plan or NIMP 2030, the National Energy Transition Roadmap or NETR, and midterm review of the 12th Malaysia Plan will further catalyze both foreign direct investment and domestic direct investment in 2024. Likewise, infrastructure development will continue to be a major economic driver with major ongoing projects like the Clown Valley Light Rail Transit Tree or LRT Tree, East Coast Rail Link, ECRL, Clown Valley Mass Traffic Transit Tree, MRT Tree, Penang LRT and Johor Bahru Singapore Rail Transit System or RTX, which are set to bolster economic activities. Moreover, the Johor Singapore Special Economic Zone and Special Financial Zone in Forest City promises to significantly enhance economic activities and strengthening various sectors such as education, finance and tourism in the country. This extensive list is only a preview of what the Malaysian Madani government has in store for our nation. With each project and initiative is testament to our commitment in embracing innovation and entrepreneurism in paving the way for a brighter future. Bolstered by political stability, evidenced by a government's total majority in parliament, Malaysia is exceptionally well positioned for a prosperous future. This strong political footing allows us to engage in strategic planning, implement robust economic policies, and nurture a dynamic, resilient economy. So ladies and gentlemen, in the third part of my speech, I would be remiss if I did not briefly touch on the crucial topic of energy transition, a new portfolio that I am honoured to help. At this juncture, let me reaffirm Malaysia's commitment to be carbon neutral by 2050. In tandem with this, we aim to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 45% in 2030, in line with the Paris Agreement. This ambitious goal is being pursued through the National Energy Transition Roadmap, NETR, and the New Industrial Master Plan, NIMP, in ensuring a just and inclusive transition towards a sustainable, low-carbon economy. The NETR targets 31% of our power from renewables by 2025, increasing to 40% by 2040. And to support this transition, the government has allocated 2 billion ringgit for the National Energy Transition Facility and established the National Energy Council to implement and monitor its progress. Therefore, accelerating renewable energy deployment and ensuring grid reliability is crucial. 
Significant investment including TNP's grid development plan to facilitate this energy trans transformation and grid initiative like the Renewable Energy Certificate Trading Platform aligns with our environmental commitments in setting the stage for digital-led sustainable practices. At the recent COP28, Malaysia reaffirmed its commitments to reduce its carbon emission and emphasize the need for inclusive climate action and fair financial contribution from developed nations. Our journey towards sustainability is geared to balance economic growth and environmental stewardship. At the same time, calling for global collaboration to achieve a just and equitable energy transition for all of us. So, ladies and gentlemen, as the Sarawak here, please allow me to briefly mention that Sarawak is leading Malaysia's charge against climate change. This historic environmental, environmental bill passed in November last year makes Sarawak the first in the country to legislate such proactive measures. This bill aims for a 45% reduction in emissions by 2030, which is not just a plan, but an actionable path forward in setting a rigorous standard for businesses in emissions reporting and paving the way for green energy advancement and sustainable development. I'm hopeful when Sarawak moves, Malaysia, when Sarawak moves, Malaysia will also move it. So as we continue our journey in 2024, the need for collaboration in climate action is more pressing than ever before. As such, I call upon the private sector and civil society to forge strong partnerships, particularly public-private people partnership, to collectively accelerate our progress in combating climate change and achieving sustainable development goals. These partnerships offer a powerful platform for innovation, information sharing and driving meaningful change. By working together and leveraging on each other's strength and resources, we can create impactful and lasting solutions in addressing the environmental challenges we all face. So finally, let us all unite in this vital mission for a sustainable future in this complex and constantly evolving global environment. So thank you. Thank you so much for